This is fucking crazy. Big up the Joe Rogan subreddit guys for clipping. This is fucking great. The Rock was on Joe Rogan and interesting episode. I'm halfway through and Rock doesn't really speak that much. Dwayne Johnson doesn't speak that much, right? For some reason. Um, I'm not too sure if he was starstruck by Joe Rogan, if he was on his best behavior or if he actually wanted to hear Rogan speak more. It felt like more like he was interviewing Rogan. Rogan was speaking for the majority of the pod. If anything, you just hear Rock saying, yeah, huh, yeah, uh, yeah. Like he wasn't really, sp I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Best behavior, starstruck, I don't know. Whatever, it's a weird episode. Anyway, this was a really interesting bit. Um, and it's titled, Rogan and The Rock Reveal Their Secret to a Stress-Free Life. And this is, again, interesting because it's another reminder of just how um, lacking in self-awareness and disconnected from reality these guys are, actually, when they speak about, you know, the struggles of the everyday man. But it also, like I said before about the Jeff Bezos thing, I want to know, why is it these guys these multi-millionaires, close to billionaires, have this compulsion to try to identify with working class, middle class people when they're not. Why do they always want to seem like they are one of us? Same with the, similar to the Jeff Bezos wife article in Vogue. I didn't read the article, but I'm assuming the article is going to make her seem like she's like, I came from humble beginnings. I'm just a poor girl from a small village. Why do they constantly want to identify with us when they're not us? Like, we like them because they are these freaks on the top of a mountain, right, that get to do this weird job where they play make-believe or where Rogan gets to speak in front of a microphone and make millions and billions. But you are a little bit other, you know? You're not like everybody else. Like, just live over there, put your content out, let us enjoy it. But why do you keep trying to identify with us when you're not really us? I don't really understand it. It's a really strange compulsion a lot of these guys. I wonder if it's guilt. Maybe it's kind of like a weird guilt because you know you are like in the small I know to people who are making loads of money and you're also making loads of money doing something and you're not really that good at it, especially The Rock, right? He's not the best actor in the world, but he's also one of the most highest paid ones out there. So maybe that's part of it. But anyway, let's play the clip so you can hear them speak about him. Brother, it's like, it's it's like attracts like. It's it's that thing. Yeah. Right? It's that thing, man, especially. <laughs> like attracts like. Mm, I don't really think that's true. I live in a, I think I'm a fairly decent human being and i live in a horrible part of london and there's not a lot of people around me that are like me you know <laughs> there's a lot of people around me that will steal all my belongings and sell it all for a dime bag so i don't think like attracts like to be fair actually if you're grinding and you're right there's a lot of people out there who are just fucking busting their ass mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm happy you and i <laughs> I know a lot of people who are busting their asses and they're not happy at all. And they take out their their um, unhappiness on their wives, <laughs> on their children, on their pets, on their walls, on their car doors, <laughs> and sometimes strangers. And I were both in that place at one time. We were like, mm -hmm. fuck, I don't like the position I'm in. I want yep. more. I want something more. But this idea, but I'm going to try and enjoy it. But I got to tell you, mm -hmm. it wasn't, and I want to know about you too, like earlier on in my career, I felt like, it's the grind that we love and sink our teeth into and just fucking go and get after it. But I wasn't having fun. Yeah. But man. <laughs> the key to happiness is having fun. <laughs> Honestly, man. Some of us don't even have the option to have fun. Some of us, the only fun that we have is laughing at others' misery. <laughs> Some of us, the only fun we have is leaving really mean comments. <laughs> that's it there's no other fun you know and that time when it switched in my mind like oh wait, like exactly what you're saying let me enjoy this now but because i've worked hard to get here wherever mm -hmm. this thing is just like everybody else but this idea like let's have fun while we're doing it along the way and you're right it has a what what counts as fun though does stealing women's handbags count as fun does defrauding the government count as fun <laughs> <laughs> does taking your kids child support money and using it to gamble and buy hookers and eight balls does that count as fun that's sometimes fun that butterfly effect it it affects other people and it attracts other people before you know it everybody's vibrating at this great place with enthusiasm yeah and excitement and butterfly effect you know try and mention butterfly effect to people in the hood who are just trying to make ends meet they're literally eating lunch meat sandwiches every day butterfly effect <laughs> Nigga, I haven't eaten a hot meal in a week. <laughs> Butterfly effect. Fun.
I realized when I was young, I got a development deal for uh, Disney when I was, uh, I think I was 25, 26. Mm -hmm. and I normal, normal settings, by the way. Normal, right? Everybody that I know had had a development deal when I was 24. Very normal. Very normal upbringing. Where you just get a development deal when you're 26. Very normal. Very, very normal. Back then as well, when he was 20s. Well, what was that? Was that in the 80s or something? Right? Like, that's big money. I got this development deal and all of a sudden they gave me like, I think it was like $100,000. Ooh. I don't think I've even ever had $100,000 in my bank account at one time. Actually, I would go as far as saying, I don't think I've ever had a hundred grand in my account <laughs> throughout the entirety of my adult life. Like if you add up all of my income in my account uh, from the time I was born until now, I don't think I've ever had a total of a hundred grand. <laughs> And he got given a check of a hundred grand once, but he thinks this is his way of connecting with a regular Joe on the street. Do you know how hilarious that is? He thinks this is a this makes him one of us. <laughs> I got a hundred grand once. <laughs> like what? <laughs> and I had money in the bag. I was like, this is crazy. Because I felt we're, we're, later. We that? So you, I was like 26, I think. Yeah. And I was, uh, it was a development deal for a television show. And all of a sudden, I had money. Like, my whole life, I was poor. And my whole... <laughs> listen to Brent... Listen, sorry. Listen to Joe Rogan's version of what poor is. Because in my head, poor is like, your, your Wi-Fi gets cut off. You, your lights get turned off. You literally don't have money to get to fucking work. That's poor, right? And I've been there. Right, and I've no friends that have had worse. Like legitimately, I've had friends who have had cars that gets towed, and the car's gone now. You don't even have the money to get your car out from the fucking tow place. It's just gone. As soon as it gets towed, you get a ticket. It's kind of done. You're kind of fucked. Your your car's now gone. You don't have a car anymore. <laughs> but listen to Joe Rogan's version of poor. Whole life, I was like wondering how I was gonna. When I was on my own, and it was like, how are how am I paying the bills? How am I eating? You know, I remember like uh, taking like a loose jar of change and counting it all out mm. so I could go to Subway and get a sandwich. You know, what poor person do you know who hasn't ha don't have to have money for food? They're poor. Will take the last money that they have to buy a Subway sandwich. You don't do that when you're poor, like I've done. You take the last money you have and you try and divvy it up so that it can stretch the longest possible. So you go to a fucking shop and you buy some bread. Maybe the most value, horrible bread that fucking tastes like rubber. But at least you can make a, you know, you can divide in your head and try to space out the sandwiches throughout the week. And maybe you mix it up by having different fillings and stuffings. But you don't take the last bit of money you have and go to McDonald's or go to fucking Subway. That's a luxury. In the hood, like going to McDonald's is like going to Five Guys, right? Because people don't have money for Five Guys. And McDonald's is way cheaper. But you also don't take the last bit of money you have to buy that. You'd go and buy stuff to make a burger at home. Maybe you'd buy one of those. I remember when we were growing up, we were super, we'd buy those. Um, I'm sure you have them in the States. You have those frozen bur burger patties. They look really good on the cardboard, on the fucking packaging. But when you put, get them out, there's these cardboard, there's these flats, you know horrible fucking things and when you fry them or whatever you're trying to cook them they end up shrinking to, to that size they end up they're like that size and the, when they're frozen but then when you fry them they go up they like they, they end up like a fucking 10p piece or something super small and then when you try and eat them they taste like nothing you have to pour, you have to cover them with so much ketchup to get some sort of taste out of them that's fucking poverty. You don't take your last money and go to fucking Subway and buy a fucking six pound or ten. Because how much? Are, even back then, Subways are still expensive, like five dollars, right? Five, that's a lot of money. If you're poor, you just buy a sandwich. You're going to do that. You know, like that you, kind of you, shit. You don't forget that kind you of shit. You don't forget that man. kind of shit. But then the moment I got that <laughs> check. Ah, Uche, Uche, Uche knows. I ate two of those yesterday. Honestly, they're so bad. They're so fucking bad. Or if you got a bit of money, you upgrade and you get the ones where they kind of sell them in two packets. Or the worst thing I remember when you were poor is sometimes, I remember in our area, we had a supermarket. Yeah, when it first opened, Iceland. They will sometimes sell. They had a brand. I forgot what the brand is. But in Iceland, right? Imagine, listen to this. Listen to this. In Iceland, there's a brand in Iceland that they had of these ready-made burgers that you could make in the micro... And again, you could make these microwavable burgers and they would sell you two burgers. 
with the patty and the cheese and the bun for one pound. Can you imagine the ingredients that they're using to make that throw that food? It's not going to be good. They're selling you two burgers that you can make in the microwave for one pound. It has and some of them come with a little packet of fucking sauce. So they give you a bit a little a little packet of ketchup. They give you the bread, the buns, the cheese, and the fucking meat. <laughs> So you basically get two burgers for 50p each. <laughs> that shit is horrible, man. You put that shit in the microwave, you, you go by the instructions, you do the wattage or the timing, 30 seconds, you eat it, and it actually tastes like nothing. It tastes like you're, 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 you're fucking buying into air. It's fucking horrible, man. I remember feeling light. Yeah. Like like weight had been lifted off me. Like now I didn't have to worry about my rent. Now oh, really? So making more money makes you stress-free? Makes you worry less. I didn't know that. That's what's missing. Everybody that's poor right now, they just need to figure out a way to make money. Oh, Rogan figured it out. If you're broke and you're poor, just go out there and make some money. And suddenly all your stresses go away. I should have figured this out. How did I not know this? <laughs> now I didn't have to worry about food. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking immediately, oh, this is the key. You just got to not get to a place where you're not worried about your bills. If that means like. So if I find a way about not to be worried about my bills, hold on. So if I close my eyes and if I cover my ears and I pretend my bills don't exist, I'm basically happier, isn't it? That's what you should. That's I, I wonder if there's somebody out there. I wonder if there's some motivational speaker out there, some fucking piece of shit that's selling a program where if you think your bills don't exist, it will come into reality. I bet you there's somebody out there doing it, like the secret. Like you have to think about being debt free. <laughs> you have to think that the bailiffs are not coming around your door. You have to think you're not getting evicted and then it, will ha it won't happen. It will happen for you or something. I bet you there's somebody out there doing that, running that fucking scam. Spend less money. If that means like live a, like a more prudent lifestyle, whatever you have to do. But get to that place where you're not worried about bills because that shit hanging over your head. Yes. <laughs> I love these guys. That's the that's the advice they're gonna give you. You bump into Joe Rogan, you're like, hey Rogan, I'm a big fan. You bump into him at an airport, at a car garage, at a fucking sauna. Right? You bump into him and then he's like, Hey man, I'll be a big fan of yours, Rogan. I wanna know what's the advice you'd give to me as a poor, struggling, middle aged, working class man? And he'll be like, just get to a point where you're not worried about your bills. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Rogan. Causes stress that stress. fucking ruins lives. Yes. It ruins people. Yeah. And so then I was like, okay, now the most important thing is fucking keep going. Yeah. Like, make sure you don't lose. Ah, uh, that's why he does so many podcasts. Because he's afraid he might lose all the money that he has that he's not going to spend. Rogan has so much money now at this point, he doesn't have enough time to spend it all. And his kids are probably set up for life. He's he look he seems like a financially, you know, prudent and, you know, clued up guy. I'm sure he's got his kids sorted out. But he's got so much money now he can't spend it. But then I remember if you remember one episode, I forgot what he was speaking to, where they mentioned universal basic income and he legitimately was shaking at the thought of like, you know, maybe his money would be used as an option to kind of you know make universal income a thing if they had to tax people that made a lot more money to make universal basic income a thing he did not like it in the slightest so rogan is telling the pause to work harder to do more to not worry about their bills but when there's an option for him to maybe alleviate some people's poverty or lack of money he's like not my money <laughs> <laughs> any ground here and keep going because now you know what it's like to be successful continue that do whatever, whatever the fuck you have to do whatever work you have to put in to continue that yeah and then when i got to a place where i felt like i have enough money that I, i'm fe i feel really secure then i started to learn how to be happy <laughs> the only way to become happy is to have loads of money but even if you have loads of money you still have to make an effort to be happy bloody hell man life sounds like a miserable place to be in it Life sounds miserable. Even when you get the money, you have to teach yourself how to be happy. But in the beginning, it was just drive. It was just all go. Yeah. And it was just very selfish thinking. You know, I'm just thinking only on what I'm trying to do. But that's all we know. But especially if you, if you grow up broke and it's the thing that you make up your mind. 
I, I feel, and it's the same thing that happened to me. I made up my mind, like, I'm broke. <laughs> you just got to make up your mind. That's what I'm lacking. I haven't made up my mind yet. I, if I make up my mind that tomorrow I'm going to have a million pounds in my bank account, it will be there. I just got to make up my mind first. Oh, come on, Agassino. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. See, that's what I'm missing. We're all missing that bit. We have to make up our mind. When we make up our mind, our bank account becomes made up. Get it? Yeah. Today, but one day, I'm never going to be broke. And I will never fucking go back to being broke. I'm, at least I'm going to do all I can yeah. not to be broke. So when you have the mentality, you, you, you have the blinders on. Yeah. Tell you, this is the way you're thinking. This is until I think we get a little older and we achieve the success, we understand, then it starts to go like this. Oh, man. I fucking love it. I love it, man. <laughs> Just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's easy. Look, I did it. It's easy. I'm a millionaire. You can be a millionaire too. Everybody could be a billionaire. Millionaire, billionaire, millionaire, billionaire. But yeah, that was an amazing section. Big up The Rock. Big up Joe Rogan for reminding us of just how easy it is to get money. You get me? Um, Ryan Joseph. AZ, can you play Steve Austin special and review it? Yeah, um, I'm actually need to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. And if I do review it, Going forward now, because I don't want to get my channel deleted, because the last Chris D'Elia special had me on the fucking chopping block. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to review them, and I'm going to put the review up on Patreon. Not because I want to paywall it, just because I want to put it somewhere where it won't get deleted and I won't get in trouble. So if you want to watch my review of any special coming going forward now, I will put those reviews up on Patreon. And what I'll do is I'll watch through them at the same time. I'll do like a watch long, record it and upload it on there. Just because I don't want to get fucking, um, I don't want to get fucking dinged. You know, that's all I, I don't want to get dinged. So any specials coming up, like I'm going to do the review of Stavros special. I'm going to do the fucking Steve-O one also. You're going to see that. Um, Oh, okay. It's, oh, okay. Andrew Tate, you don't want to watch it. Okay, cool. Don't worry. I'm not going to subject you to it, brother. I'm not going to subject you to it. Don't worry. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> okay fair enough but if you want to watch it you'll see it on my patreon patreon link is patreon.com for just agostino i'll be reviewing all specials coming up um on that patreon i'll be subjecting myself to sitting down watching these things in full and recording my reaction in real time so if you want to see that go over to my patreon at the moment my reaction to the crystalia grow or die the god specials up there on now at the moment so if you want to watch that make sure you check that out make sure you check that out 